Hello, thank you for joining me today as we are continuing to follow along with the Explore the Bible curriculum as we study the book of Song of Songs. The title of today's lesson is Relational Investments, and it comes from Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 6 through 16. The main point of the lesson is this, just as a couple must invest in their relationship Believers must also invest in their relationship with God. A successful marriage, it requires both husband and wife to give sacrificially to each other. Those acts of sacrificial love display the mutual benefits that each spouse receives from the relationship. The husband and the wife both need mutual support, commitment, and affirmation from each other in order for the marriage relationship to succeed. When one side or the other fails to provide such love and sacrifice, then problems begin to occur in one aspect of the marriage after another, over and over. In today's scripture passage, Solomon and his bride are now married, and the wife has another dream about their relationship. In her dream, she rejects Solomon's advances for companionship, and the result is a miscommunication that causes problems in their marriage. Now, before we begin the lesson, would you pray with me? Lord, we acknowledge that you are the author of marriage and the author of our salvation. Since you created both, we ask that you would continue to guide us in our relationships. Help us, Lord, to be the best spouses that we can be in our marriages. Help us to be, the be the, to be self-sacrificial and loving with our spouses. Give us humble and flexible hearts, willing to seek the best for others before seeking things for ourselves. We admit that we make all kinds of mistakes, so give us grace in our relationships, Lord, as we seek to have them glorify you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Read with me Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 6 through 16. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had left. He was gone. My heart sank at his departure. I looked for him, but did not find him. I called him, but he did not answer. The watchmen found me as they made their rounds in the city. They beat me. They bruised me. They took away my cloak, those watchmen of the walls. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, if you find my beloved, what will you tell him? Tell him I am faint with love. How is your beloved better than others, most beautiful woman? How is your beloved better than others that you so charge us? My beloved is radiant and ruddy, outstanding among ten thousand. His head is purest gold, his hair is wavy as black as a raven, his eyes are like doves by the water streams, washed in milk, mounted like jewels. His cheeks are like beds of spice, yielding perfume. His lips are like lilies, dripping with myrrh. His arms are rods of gold, set with topaz. His body is like polished ivory, decorated with lapis lazuli. His legs are pillars of marble, set on bases of pure gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, choice as its cedars. His mouth is sweetness itself. He is altogether lovely. This is my beloved. This is my friend, daughters of Jerusalem. The first thing we see in her dream is the cry for companionship. And it comes from verse 6 through 8. And it says this, I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had left. He was gone. My heart sank at his departure. I looked for him, but did not find him. I called him, but he did not answer. The watchmen found me as they made their rounds in the city. They beat me. They bruised me. They took away my cloak, those watchmen of the walls. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, if you find my beloved, what will you tell him? Tell him I am faint with love. Miscommunication. It can lead to conflict in marriage. In verse 2 through 5, Solomon's bride has rejected his advances. 
And when she realizes that he has left, she regrets her actions. Notice how she feels and the emotions that she expresses. She says in verse 6, My heart sank at his departure. The word for sank means that her heart went out to him, yearning for him. But it was too late. He had already left. Realizing what she had done and knowing that she needed to make things right, like her previous dream in chapter 3, she decides to go out and to search for him. But things just continue to get worse in the story. The night watchmen that were kind to her in her first dream, they are now cruel and injure her. So she then turns to her friends for help to find her beloved husband. This situation teaches us that no matter what happens, husbands and wives must support each other in marriage. Both need emotional support from each other. Because men and women are so different, men need one kind of love and support, while women often need a different kind of love and support. But we really have no excuse because God has made us fully capable of giving the kind of love and support that our spouse deserves. And if we fail to give that to each other, then miscommunications can happen that often lead to hurt feelings and misunderstandings. And we begin to grow distant from each other. Our relationship with God can suffer from similar problems. The difference in our relationship with God is that we are always the one messing things up. Many times God comes knocking at the door of our hearts and we are just too busy to be bothered by his interruption. So we ignore the knock and we refuse to acknowledge that he's even there. Sometimes we strike out on our own and begin to listen to other worldly voices instead of the voice of our Savior. And when that happens, we end up not only straining our relationship with God, but we end up getting hurt because we listened to wrong advice that led us away from godly ways. Now, in the next verse, Solomon's wife experiences the call for remembering. In verse 9, it says, How is your beloved better than others, most beautiful women, woman? How is your beloved better than others so that's, that you so charge us? It's the daughters of Jerusalem who are talking in verse 8, the wife asked the daughters of Jerusalem to help her find her husband. And they ask her, but what's so special about him? It's a question that causes the wife to remember the reasons why she loves him so much. Often selfishness and pride can keep us focused on our own hurts and disappointments. And that's what got her into this in the first place. By remembering why we came to love our spouses, we rekindle the flame of that love. And it helps us to refocus on the things that are most important. Remembering also helps us recognize our own imperfections so that we can return to a humble attitude. Take some time this week to stop and remember why you start, started loving your spouse in the first place. Often, we need to take a trip down memory lane in our relationship with God, too. Have you ever heard the phrase that familiarity breeds contempt? It means that the more familiar you feel with someone, the more you take them for granted. But it's a good exercise to remind yourself of who God is and what He's done for you. God is a loving and faithful God. Sure, we have pains, and we have struggles, and we have disappointments, but it doesn't change how wonderful God is to us. Remind yourself of how good He has been to you. And remember how He has always, always been faithful. Now, because Solomon's wife begins to remember why she loves him, she realizes the crux or the reason for celebrating Look at verse 10 through 16. My beloved is radiant and ruddy, outstanding among 10,000. His head is purest gold. 
His hair is wavy and black as a raven. His eyes are like doves by the water streams, washed in milk and mounted like jewels. His cheeks are like beds of spice, yielding perfume. His lips are like lilies, dripping with myrrh. His arms are rods of gold set with topaz. His body is like polished ivory, decorated with lapis lazuli. His legs are pillars of marble set on bases of pure gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, choice as its cedars. His mouth is sweetness itself. He is altogether lovely. This is my beloved. This is my friend, daughters of Jerusalem. The wife begins to explain to the daughters of Jerusalem why she loves her husband and why he is worth finding First, she compliments his physical appearance. His hair, his eyes, his face, his lips, his arms and his body, his overall build, and finally, the sweetness of his kisses. Now, we would all have to agree that beauty is sometimes in the eye of the beholder. But the important thing here is that she is reaffirming his value to her and her love for him. Second, She identifies her husband as her best friend. Even though Song of Songs puts a lot of focus on sexual intimacy in marriage, a successful marriage is based on more than that. Friendship, partnership, companionship are also equally important aspects of a successful marriage relationship. Your spouse needs to be your best and most trusted friend that you have. Lastly, she demonstrates a high level of emotional and spiritual connection that is vital to a successful marriage. If you and your spouse are not on the same page when it comes to spiritual matters and life values, then you are going to run into a lot of struggles. So communicate and pray for unity with your spouse in those areas. Also, in order to succeed in marriage, you have to have intimacy, fidelity, and emotional connection. Your marriage relationship, your relationship cannot be one dimensional. If it is, it will not survive. Sexual intimacy without emotional support is not enough. Friendship without sexual intimacy is not enough. Successful marriages are multi-dimensional, emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical. One of the biggest keys that we can learn from this story today in the Song of Songs for maintaining a healthy and successful marriage is do not neglect your relationship. Be intentional about building it up in godly ways. It is critical that you spend time often celebrating each other and building each other up. Paul's instructions in Ephesians are some of the best advice for building up others and creating healthy relationships. So let me leave you with Paul's words in Ephesians 4, 29 through 32. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Thank you for being with me to study God's Word today. I pray that this study has encouraged you and helps to strengthen your relationships. And remember to spend some time every day praying for wisdom from God concerning your relationships. May God bless you this week.